You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Cabral Concept. So good to have you here with me today. Looking forward to getting into our Friday review, an exciting week. This was a week off for me in Maine on vacation. I want to share a little bit about that, a little bit about the best of the week, talking about the practice a little bit, even though I have been away for the week, looking at our product reviews, or this week, actually, a recipe that I found out from a, well, essentially a new smoothie bowl. And you know that I love smoothies. You know that I love new smoothie bowl recipes. So this is a great one to share with you. I'll bring you some research, two research studies today that I wanted to bring you. Of course, one on nutrition, but another on 5G. And I've been talking a little bit more about EMFs and 5G lately. If you want to see those previous podcasts, always do feel free to tune back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. But I want to give you a little bit just straight straight ahead research on what 5G may mean for you. And the last thing is I really need to reiterate something on lab results and how to look for inflammation from a cardiovascular perspective. I've talked about it before, but I want to reiterate it. And I want to do that for a very specific reason, and we'll go over that towards the end of the show. So without further ado, since we have so much to cover, I want to dive right into today's show. As I said, I have been traveling this week. I go up to Maine quite a bit in the summer. The summer in New England, as you may know or may not know, is really only two months. You know, it's July and August. June is a great month. It, don't get me wrong, it's great weather, but it's cool. It's crisp. It's not really beach weather. But July and August are amazing months in New England. Beautiful to be near the beach. I love being near the ocean. Lakes are amazing. I grew up, you know, essentially near a lake. We would go to that quite often, but never really went to the beach. In Maine, yes, we would go, but a totally different experience, a totally different story, in my opinion. When you get near that water's edge or even just feeling the mist in the air, I honestly believe those negative ions, which we have studied, again, negative ions have been studied quite in depth, do dramatic things for the human body. So, one thing I could tell you, just scientific based, is that when you are near the water's edge, or let's say that you're walking on the morning grass and it's wet from the dew, you're actually absorbing those negative ions from the earth. And what are those negative ions? Well, essentially what you're looking at is a way that the human body uses, again, absorbing those ions to decoagulate the blood. And this is actually most important first thing in the morning. I spoke about a little bit about this earlier this week. But what happens is you wake up with your blood a little bit thicker. Part of that's due to dehydration, part of it's platelets that early in the morning, and the blood being a little bit more so-called sticky. So just getting outside, one thing I do is I get up pretty early even while I'm on vacation. So instead of getting up at 5.30, I may get up somewhere around 6, 6.30. And so what I do is before, especially in Maine, people are early risers for the most part in Maine, but they're still not quite up. So I go outside, my dog's off the leash, he's kind of running around on the grass, and I'm just walking barefoot. It's an amazing thing. And I just invite you to try that if you've never done it before, especially as that sun is rising. Uh, it's a, It really is a truly amazing experience. So one thing I wanted to mention too, is that you know I run multiple companies and you know all of it has to do with functional medicine and, and really trying to help people live the life ideally that they want. And I preach that quite a bit. I talk about it every single Monday on our Motivation and Mindset Monday shows. And the reason why I bring it up today on a Friday review is that I'm off. Like I'm with my girls. I call them my girls all the time, my two daughters and my wife. And um, it's just me and my French bulldog moose for the, <laughs> for the guys in the family. And you know we're having a great time. We're together. We're making breakfast together. We're doing activities. We're playing games. We're drawing. Like all those great things because we don't have a TV in Maine. It's not something that we do. So it's a great thing, but I still feel myself being drawn 
to checking in with my team to seeing what's going on. And this week, I'm actually doing interviews for not a long time, but for about two 30-minute appointments per day to check in with medical directors to actually, we're hiring our very first medical director for Equilibrium Nutrition. They're going to be working alongside me and I'm going to have them help with all the new labs that we're going to be doing. So I'm excited about that. And the reason why I do bring this up is that I'm such a big believer that if you're able to find a job that you're passionate about, it's the old saying that you'll never work a day in your life. I really believe that. Even though there are some days that are very stressful, there really are. And that's just the way it is for anything in life. Sometimes relationships or your children or your parents or your siblings or your work. It's just stress is part of life. It's just what it is. But if you can look at it in a little bit different way and reframe it, you can understand it's just part of the journey, that there's a yin and a yang to everything, that there is the great Tao, right? There is the light and there is the dark. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. We just want to be able to keep it all in perspective. But the big thing is this, if if you can integrate work life, not work life balance where it always has to be separate. But if you can find something that you love to do and you can spend time with family and you can do a little bit of work and you do that, but it's all things that you love, it is such a rich life. It really is. Doesn't have to be rich monetarily, but rich in satisfaction, rich in desire that it's what you desire to do. And I'll tell you right now, it's every time that I do go away, I just feel that that's reinforced is that I love being able to spend far more time, you know, the entire day, right? 24 hours a day with my family. But I also love to see what is going on. How are we helping people? How are we moving forward? And it's that growth based process. So, a lot of people that are, you know, of the mindset of growth that love to be able to be working on passion based projects, that excites them. It invigorates them and it gives them a lot of energy. So, I just wanted to share that. And if you're kind of in my spot and you feel like, you need to turn work off completely. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't feel like I need to turn it off completely. I feel like I have a very balanced and a very healthy overall life. And so I just wanted to share that with you. Maybe it resonates with you again, and and maybe it doesn't. And that's okay, because not everybody loves their work. And that's also okay as well, because you could have a hobby you love, or you're doing your work so that it, it allows you to spend that time with your family or to be able to provide for them. And that's great as well. And so again, everybody has their own kind of work life balance. But I wanted to share a little bit with you of mine as well. All right, the last couple things I want to mention is this. We and you, you may or may not already know this because if you're on the Equilibrium Nutrition newsletter, and how do you sign up for that? Simply that little pop-up at equilibriumnutrition.com. It's for first-time people. You won't see it again after that. It's unbelievable. I mean, this is an ongoing saga. And I, I will have updates on this uh, in the future because I just don't know our future of selling CBD. And, and it's honestly, it's too bad. But we had to take it off our equilibriumnutrition.com website, even though we're giving it away for free. Believe it or not, Amazon payments shut us down from using that little Amazon payments button. And it's it's insane because we're not actually charging anyone for the CBD. We're not selling it. We're giving it away. But even mentioning on the website, you would think that this is something that you know causes cancer or like anything. But no, it has the reverse effect on people. They're using it in cancer research. They're using it as an anti-anxiolytic, as an anti-insomnia for children with autism, for people with seizures and epilepsy. There is, I'll tell you, make no mistake about it, and I'm not a conspiracy theory type of person, but there is certainly something going on for sure with CBD. It's not even psycho, there is no even psychoactive effect. (laughs) You can sell alcohol online, you could probably even sell cigarettes, but yet you can't sell CBD, which has no psychoactive effect and is not going to harm anyone. It's unbelievable, it really is. But just to let you know, we are giving away our most powerful product to date, and that's the CBD soft gels. It's completely free. It's on orders over $199. I can just tell you though, it it runs through, I believe, Sunday. You can always email support at equilibriumnutrition.com since I don't run that part of the the actual company. But I can tell you this, that it's a product I've been using for about seven months. It's as powerful as the oil. The oil is phenomenal. It works within 20 minutes, the oil. The CBD soft gels though are a next level potency, meaning that it, it hits you at a deeper level for a deeper level of basically sedation and relaxation. But you take them about 60 to 90 minutes before you want the effect to kick in, right? So that's how you get it. That's the difference with a soft gel. They're absolutely incredible. It's the first time we've ever offered them. We can't even sell them. We're giving you away a product that I I, we already paid for, but we have no way of getting to you. So I mean it's a $79.95 value. We're giving a bottle away. 
on every purchase over $199, but you will not see it on EquilibriumNutrition.com. You just simply have to check out and we're going to ship it to you through this Sunday. So that's it. I mean, that's the best I can say. I wish we could do better. I really do. I feel like I'm letting people down, but I don't know what else to do because people are not allowing us to process payments. We're doing everything in our power. We're looking at processor overseas now. But anyway, through July 28th, any purchase through July 28th will be shipped and at over $199 US. This is US domestic only. We cannot ship these to any other country. Believe me, I wish we could. It's US domestic only. Over $199 will ship you a bottle of CBD. You will not see it in your cart at Equilibrium Nutrition. Okay, enough about that. We are moving on to our review of the week. I love bringing you books. I love bringing you my favorite technology and gadgets. Last week, I hope that you did tune in for my Aura Ring review. So check that out. That was a product that, well, not to my knowledge, because I know the products out there, but to my using and honestly, surprise, is the best sleep tracker out there right now. It honestly is. It's not just for sleep, but if you use it, you'll be able to find some really interesting data about yourself as well as recovery. So check that out. That was last week's podcast. Well, you know, you can just, again, head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts, and you'll be able to find that review on the Aura Ring. It's O-U-R-A Ring, and you'll be able to see all about that and check out uh, the links there. Okay, but today's review, this week's review is something called the Mermaid Bowl. The Mermaid Bowl is a smoothie bowl. My family and I are huge smoothie bowl advocates. So especially myself, my two daughters, we love them. We make them all the time. My wife makes them for us a lot of the time, especially during the summer, the hot months. You can use, honestly, whatever you'd like. You can use a food processor if you want. We use the Vitamix up in Maine, and we use the Blendtec back in Boston. They both work great. You know, if I had to pick one, well, again, you can go all different price ranges. You can go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast in that search box. Just type in best blender and you'll see levels of blenders from $50 all the way up to $800. You can get any blender in between. The more expensive ones, they honestly do work better for smoothie bowls. For an overall smoothie, it's not going to matter too much. You can get a good $99 one versus the the $700, $800 ones. But that Vitamix with a hand tamp, it really does work great. Vitamix doesn't give me any... I wish they gave me a coupon code for you to use. I would absolutely pass it along to you, but I don't know. (laughs) They just have decided not to. I did want to pass that along to you. But again, Blendtec's great. The Ninja's great. There's a lot of items that are out there that are great. What I'm saying though is this, use your blender. Use it for your morning smoothie. Use it to make things like black bean soup if you want. I mean, it's it's so powerful. And I mean, the one in Boston, the Blendtec actually counts how many smoothies I've done. I think this one's like three years old and we have over 2,000 on the, on the little smoothie maker there. I don't know how many more we've done in Maine, but it doesn't track it. But one thing that we love doing is we make these these pink bowls. You know, we call them like either the pink flamingo bowl or whatever it might be. And my youngest daughter loves those. We simply make them with pink pitaya. And you can check out one of those recipes that I've given before. But pitaya is essentially pink dragon fruit. And it's a delicious bowl, something we do all the time when we visit Hawaii. Well, one thing up here, and I've seen this done before, but I've never gotten one. And it is mixing spirulina with your ingredients in order to make a light blue based bowl. And it's it's phenomenal. So here's what it is. I'm just going to give you the recipe and then I'm going to write it down today at today's show notes as well. So by the end of the show, I will get you today's show notes. I'll have to just link up what today's actual show is. And I believe it's episode 1267. Again, I will confirm that before the end of today's show notes. That's where all my research will be that will be coming up in just a second as well. So here is the ingredients. Now, usually when you make an acai bowl or a smoothie bowl, it's made with acai, which is A-C-A-I. And that is a Brazilian, very uh, bitter, but dark berry, very high in antioxidants. It's a fantastic berry to mix with them. But not every smoothie bowl needs to be made with the frozen acai or even pitaya, which is the pink dragon fruit. Again, dragon fruit also comes in white, but typically you're using the pink frozen packets as well. And again, I've done I've done uh, shows on that, so you can absolutely check that out. So this one is made, though, with frozen pineapple. So all you need to do is get frozen organic pineapple chunks. You can buy them already pre-cubed. That's fine. With the bananas 
you know my trick for frozen bananas. Buy your own organic bananas. Wait till they get those brown spots, which are much more powerful for the body. And you can check out my previous podcast on that. But wait for those little brown spots to occur with the higher amounts of uh, TNF in them, a TNF factor. And once you see those brown spots, you can freeze those bananas. So what I do is I typically just take one banana and I break it up into four pieces. Why am I giving you that little tidbit? Well, once you go to take the frozen banana out, it's broken up into pieces inside of a bag, whatever you want to use. You can use a, a silicone bag or whatever you prefer. Well, here's the thing. You don't always know what equals one banana. So what I do is just try to break it up into four even pieces for the banana. Easy. I pull those right out and I throw them right in the blender. Well, you can again, you can use as much banana or as little banana as you would like. So for this recipe, you're putting in about 50% banana, about 50% pineapple. Okay, that's going to give you a nice creamy consistency to your smoothie bowl. Now, you're going to add some coconut milk. How much coconut milk do you add for a smoothie bowl? You only add enough liquid in order to get the blender to blend the frozen fruit as well as hand tamping it if you're using the hand tamper, which essentially putting in this device that pushes down the fruit as you're blending it, right? And that allows it to create this pudding-like substance, which is your smoothie bowl. So it's thicker so that you can eat it with a spoon. So that's all it is. Like This is not complicated, This, but it's delicious. And I'm telling you, if you have kids or you have a partner that's not really into natural health, you can make them one of these bowls. We call it ice cream for our girls, but you can make it like that. And all it is is frozen pineapple, frozen banana, a little bit of coconut milk, or use whatever your favorite nut milk is. And then here's the secret ingredient. You're going to add just a little bit, okay? This is going to be to taste, and this is going to be the amount. I can't give you the exact amount because I don't know how much you're making for one smoothie bowl. Now, if you're just making one smoothie bowl, simple, you could add in about three-fourths of a cup of, of pineapple, frozen pineapple, to one cup, and about one to one and a half frozen bananas. Put that right in there. This will make a big bowl. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to make a big bowl. You're going to add in just a couple splashes of that coconut milk, maybe, again, about three tablespoons. It depends on the power of your blender. And then you're going to add in just about a fourth to a half a teaspoon of that spirulina. That's all you need. Now, you're going to blend that all together. You're going to create this really beautiful light blue smoothie bowl. Okay, So that's what it's going to be, a smoothie, but in a thick form. If you've never done this before, you're going to pour it out into your favorite bowl. I'm going to add photos today. The photo of the smoothie bowl I got will be at 1267, stevencabral.com forward slash 1267 for today. And then the toppings, it's all about the toppings to give it a little bit of texture and crunch. A smoothie bowl is great, but adding texture to it is what makes the smoothie bowl. So typically you're going to do some type of free granola. It could be oat-based or it could be paleo-based, whatever you like. It could be some crushed nuts, or it could be some bee pollen. That's excellent as well. You might do something that I love to do, which is hemp hearts. So you can add a little bit of gluten-free granola, typically what we do, a little bit of those hemp hearts, which give you some great protein, omega-3, 6s, and 9s. You can do some dried coconut slivers if you'd like. Some sliced strawberries is a must or almost a must. Some blueberries in there, and then some raw honey drizzled all over the top. It is absolutely delicious. It is basically tastes like a dessert. So you can do this. I want you to give it a shot. It's incredible. And it's obviously something that can be added to most people's healthy routines, as long as you're using uh, fruit in your diet at this moment, uh, depending on the plan that you're at. So check this out. I will put the ingredients and I will also link up a photo today at stephencabral.com forward slash one, two, six, seven. I want to give a little shout out to the Live Cafe or Live Cafe, if you prefer to pronounce it that way, in Kenny Bunk, Maine. That is where I first saw this exact recipe. So I'm going to give them a little shout out. All right. Research is up next. The research here is important today. I'm going to start off with a simpler one. Now, this is already to reinforce what you already know, but it's not a bad thing to reinforce, again, what we're already trying to do. But you should also share, feel free to share this with those people that need this information. But here's the thing. Diets lacking in whole grains and fruit and high in processed meats, trans fats, and sugary drinks may be responsible for one-fifth of all deaths, about 20% or more of all deaths. That makes poor diet the biggest risk factor in the world. This was done by the Global Burden of Disease and it was done over the course of 27 years in 195 countries 
and it was conducted by researchers at the Institute for Health, Metrics, and Evaluation, and published in The Lancet. So you can check that out, and that is done by the Global Burden of Disease Study, and it was published in The Lancet. Okay, So what is it basically telling you? You need to get fiber in your diet, which is why all the people out there only eating meat, uh, again, go through the phase, as I say. I understand it. Learn from the process. Work the process. Just because it works for body transformation does not mean it works for health. Super important to understand the difference between the two because there's a lot of things you can do to transform your body that do work, no doubt about it, but they're not the best thing to do for long-term health. And eventually at some point, you're going to care less about having eight-pack abs and more about living past your 60s. I just think it's important, really, really important to look at that. So maybe you never do grains, but for sure, try to get in some fruit. I mean, it's so, so crucial. Anybody says that they shouldn't have fruit in their diet simply doesn't understand the human digestive tract, where humans came from, how humans evolved, how we're able to use fruit in our diet. And it's just, it's unbelievable. And then of course, nobody should be eating trans fat. Nobody should be consuming processed sugar. Fruit is not processed sugar. And then also processed meats, salamis, the bacons, etc. Every once in a while, I'm not saying you can't do that. Every once in a while, enjoy yourself. But we're not talking about on a weekly basis for sure. Okay. Next one is this, and I'm simply going to read you this. This is from Deborah Davis, is the author of this article. She is a PhD and has her master's of public health. And this is article is entitled The Dangers of 5G Networks. Again, this is by Deborah Davis, PhD, Master of Public Health, and President of the Environmental Health Trust. So you can look her up if you want to learn more about this. I don't know her at all, never met her. But it was a great article. Super short. I want to read it to you right now. The new 5G cell phone network promises to be the most powerful and fastest of all time. But with that extra speed comes extra risks. Because of the shorter length of 5G high-frequency waves and their inability to go through walls and trees, this new network will require building about 800,000 new wireless antenna structures, many of which will be located close to houses, schools, and residential neighborhoods. To put that in perspective... There were about 300,000 antennas in 2015 and half as many in 2002. So this is just me interjecting for a second. So they're creating another 800,000 new wireless antennas to help with 5G. If you don't know what 5G is, essentially it is the ability to speed up your ability to download MP3s and anything on the internet, videos, music, etc. So most people believe that it's completely unnecessary and, and many countries have actually banned it because of the dangers. Let me go on with her article. I'm going to pick back up now. The new antennas will be able to emit 3G, 4G, and 5G microwave radiation at the same time. The World Health Organization classifies this kind of radiation as a possible carcinogen, which means it causes cancer, and there's evidence that it can lead to some types of brain tumors, both in animal studies by the U.S. government and in human studies that have used phones regularly for a decade or longer. Recently, Sprint stopped operating a cell tower in a California schoolyard after four students and three teachers developed. They were moved from a California schoolyard after four students and three teachers there developed rare cancers in the 10 years since the tower was erected. With 5G, these risks may only worsen. The U.S. National Toxicology Program, considered the industry gold standard for this kind of testing, reported clear evidence of rare cancers and genetic damage in animals after prolonged exposure to 2G and 3G radiation. 5G radiation is very similar, but it operates at a higher frequency and shorter range, making it potentially even more dangerous. So what I want to do is simply let you know that there's always two sides to every story. And there's a reason why Israel, Belgium, and many other countries are deciding that after trying 5G and all the health effects that it caused, they're actually pulling it and they're banning it from their countries. I think this is important to look at because the US has too many private interest groups that stand to make too much money for something like this to ever be banned. I mean, simply look at pharmaceutical industry or anything to know that they just wield a lot more power than your average everyday citizen. And keep in mind, the government is not necessarily there to protect you. I really want to make this clear. The government is made up of a lot of people who have a lot of different agendas 
that are looking out for oftentimes themselves. And I don't mean to be negative, but if we really had a government for the people and by the people, we wouldn't allow what we allow in this country. And don't get me wrong, I love the United States. I really do. I just think it's an amazing place uh, where we're afforded many different freedoms. And I understand that there's a cost for all of those things, but we do have to understand there are things being done to us, usually without our knowledge, such as 5G, that we should start to look into. And we may not want to put that in our own house. So important to look at that. And I just simply wanted to make you more aware. I'm not the expert on 5G, but I have studied it. And I do want to say something to look into. And of course, you can look outside of myself for more in-depth studies on that as well. All right. Thank you for hearing me out on that. Okay. So now we are moving on to the lab results part of the podcast. Super excited to be doing this with you. And the reason is this. Literally put out an official ad for our medical director position about seven days ago. And we've been completely overwhelmed in a good way with applicants. We've gotten at least 60 applicants in in under a week. And I've been able to now begin to get on the phone with a lot of these applicants that we've been narrowing down. And the quality of people and really the caring, like that's the thing is like, there's so many great doctors and health practitioners out there that care so much about people getting results and wanting to help them. And they know that it's not what's being done in conventional medicine right now. And again, I'm speaking with a lot of MDs. This is nothing against being a medical doctor because I know how much medical doctors want to help their patients. But it's not able to really be done from a chronic health and chronic disease-based perspective with the current system. And it's not the medical doctor's fault. So I'm telling you right now, whoever we bring on to our team, and again, they're they're going to be part of our team, our team of amazing practitioners. I believe that you're going to be wowed by them. I believe that you're going to be excited and they're going to be a great addition to our team. So the reason why I say this is that what I'm going to do is I want to start offering annual blood work. I really want people to be able to run an advanced lipid profile, looking at their not just their cholesterol, triglycerides, HDL, LDL, but I want them to look at what's their particle size, what's their particle number, what is their apolipoprotein, little a, little b. I want to go through all that with people to understand that there is so much to look at cardiovascular risk. And the reason why this is important, because I've said it again and I'll continue to say it, is that if you can make sure that you're not at risk for a heart attack, at risk for a stroke, or at risk for type 2 diabetes, you're really doing such an amazing job at making sure that you pretty much just skate by to your 80s. I mean, that's the great thing. I mean, that's really what we're talking about. Those are three major forms of disease. We need to wipe those out, and I really believe that we can. So it's my goal is to continue to push forward as much as I can and enable people to take back control of their health. And I know that really just by by having another team member someone that has the training in this advanced blood work as well. It's just going to be a great addition to the team. So I'm super excited. The lab results that I want to bring you today is this. I've actually gone over this before, and I kind of hesitated as I should give this to you or not, but it's so crucial. And I know I always state this, but you really never have to run a lab through equilibriumnutrition.com if you don't. It's simply a way to take back control of your own health and have me read your lab and have my amazing team of health practitioners take you through the protocol that we developed for you. I believe it's the future of medicine, and I believe it's being practiced right now. I really do. So of course, I would love you to do it through equilibrium nutrition, but you never do. We actually just tell you, hey, here's exactly what we do. And if, as long as you get a good qualified practitioner, you can work with anyone, of course, that you'd like. So I want to give you that today. I want to make sure that you're really not at risk for cardiovascular inflammation and cardiovascular-based disease. And the best way to do that is to run a lipid profile. Today, I'm just going to tell you about cholesterol. Look at your total cholesterol. A lot of people will try to convince you that having high cholesterol is not that unhealthy. I'll tell you right now that it may or may not be. I mean, I'm always honest with you. It may or may not be. You might be able to skate through life at cholesterol of 260 or 280. Maybe, maybe not though. Like that's the thing is like, maybe, maybe not. You don't know. Here's the thing we do know. We're going to look at inflammation in the arteries. So I want to talk about that in a minute. Just to play it safe, your cholesterol should really be between 160 and 200, your total cholesterol. Yes, the ratio matters. Yes, HDL, LDL matters. Yes, triglycerides matter. Yes, particle size matter. It all matters. But why even risk it? Like, why have your cholesterol at 260? Why do that? You know, like, 
It's unnecessary. You still produce plenty of hormones with cholesterol of 160 to 200. You're not at increased risk for cancer, which a lot of people are when they have cholesterol of 140 or below. A lot of people don't know you that know that, but I tell both sides of the story. I really do. And yes, 50% of people that have heart attacks also have normal cholesterol. So it's not the end-all be-all. But we want to look at it because we don't want occluded arteries caked full of cholesterol, right? So it matters. It matters. Here's the thing, though. You want to look at additional markers. All together, this is kind of like my big three. Want to look at overall cholesterol, advanced lipid profile. We'll be talking more about that in the future. Homocysteine. Your homocysteine should really be between about six and a half and nine. I mean, the sweet spot would be between six and a half and eight and a half if you can do it. That's the absolute best place. And here's why. Well, a lot of people know that high homocysteine can be higher levels of inflammation in the arteries. And a lot of times it's simply from not enough B vitamins. Like taking an activated B vitamin can be life-changing for most people. I mean, it really can because it helps with the methylation process. So it helps with detox. It helps with inflammation. It's super simple to do. But again, a lot of people aren't told this. Now, Here's the thing, though, that people say, well, you want low homocysteine. You don't necessarily, you don't want really low cholesterol, and you don't really want really low homocysteine either, because that can also show an issue. And believe it or not, that if you have really low homocysteine, you can also be at risk for other inflammatory factors. So it's always about balance. It truly is. Try to keep it for just like, for simple sake in your mind, you might want to think of it more between like six and nine for homocysteine. Ideal world, I always look at six and a half to eight and a half. That's the balancing act. Now, it's not in isolation. I'm also looking at that. I'm looking at methylcobalamin or methylmalonic acid to look at your B12 levels. I'm looking at other B vitamins on an organic acids test. So again, nothing in isolation, red blood cells, et cetera. Now, there's one more you want to look at, the part of the big three for the heart risk, and that is CRP. So CRP is great. And if you can run HS-CRP, high sensitivity CRP, which stands for C-reactive protein, that would be amazing. Keep in mind, any medical doctor can run these numbers. You just have them run it. You ask them like, hey, please run this for me. I'd really like to know my HSCRP and my homocysteine and my you know, advanced lipid profile. And that would be great. Now for HSCRP, or let's just talk about it as CRP, the range is from essentially zero or 0.5 to three, depending on the lab. Here's the thing though. Anything above a one is not great. If you are at a one, you're at an average risk, an average risk for developing heart-based disease or cardiovascular disease. If you are above a three, you're at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease. They can't tell you exactly what, but if you have a poor cholesterol ratio, high cholesterol, high homocysteine, and high CRP, that's a recipe for disaster for the heart. So share this with friends. Share it with family. Make sure your CRP and HSCRP are below a one. Lab tests may differ, and they may differ outside of the US, but look for a low number for CRP, below a one. That will show a lower level of inflammation in the body. It's acute-based inflammation. It could be from tissue damage. It could be from any number of things, but you should have a lower CRP number. So those are the big three that I want you to look at for right now. I absolutely will talk more about them. But since it's top of mind and this is a Friday review, I wanted to bring you those. I hope this has been helpful. Again, I'm always open to your suggestions and and I love talking about anything that you want to hear about. So thank you so much. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I'm going to enjoy my last couple days in Maine and uh, I look forward to bringing you tomorrow and Sunday's house calls where I'll be answering our community's questions. And again, any questions, feel free to reach out. And last thing, as always, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to pass it along to anyone else you believe it could serve. Take care, everyone. Before you go, I wanted to ask you this question. What if I could teach you in just a couple of hours how to transform your thyroid, hormones, adrenal, cholesterol, blood pressure, blood sugar, weight loss, energy, mood, brain, pregnancy, anti-aging, or many other health-related issues? After 20 years in private practice, after seeing and overseeing a quarter of a million client appointments, I sincerely feel I have the real world data and have found the answer you've been searching for. So what I've done is spent hundreds of hours of my own time refining what you need to know in order to uncover your underlying root cause health issues and then begin to rebalance the body and bring it back to a state of robust health and wellness. I'm gonna teach you exactly what I do in my private practice so you can understand how you got here 
and now what you need to do in order to heal. You'll receive all of the important success checklists, protocols, and even ways to customize it to make the program fit your busy life. And you'll get all of this at a fraction of the price. Let me save you the time, money, energy, stress, and frustration of not knowing what to do next. Instead of reading dozens of books on the topic and seeing multiple practitioners, I will condense everything that you need to know in just a few hours of video tutorials that you can watch and listen to anywhere. Together, we will make this healing process an enjoyable one that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I wish you all of the best of health and happiness, and I hope to be able to guide you on your healing journey through my health results accelerators. Simply choose the health and balance you're currently suffering from, and by the end of today, you'll know what went wrong and how to get well again. I guarantee it. For details, head over now to stephencabral.com forward slash courses.